Letter 10 of Young Americans Abroad, or Vacation in Europe, Travels in England, France, Holland, Belgium, Prussia, and Switzerland, edited by J. O. Chules, read for LibriVox.org into the public domain. Dear Charlie, We have, while at Bristol, made two journeys to Bath, and I am sure we are all of opinion that it is the most elegant city we ever saw. A great deal of its beauty is owing to the fine freestone of which it is chiefly built. We were much pleased with the Royal Crescent, which consists of a large number of elegant mansions, all built in the same style. Ionic columns rise from a rustic basement and support the superior cornice. These houses are most elegantly furnished. All the city is seen from the Crescent, and no other spot affords so grand a prospect. Camden Place is an elliptical range of edifices, commanding an extensive view of the valley, with the winding stream of the Avon, and the villages upon its banks. One of the principal features of Bath is its hills and downs, which shelter it on every side. The sides on these downs are very fine, extending for miles, and you see thousands of sheep enjoying the finest possible pasturage. Talking of sheep, I am reminded how very fine the sheep are here, it seems to me they are almost as big again as our mutton-makers. Queen Square in Bath pleases us all, as we are told it does everyone. It stands up high and is seen from most parts of the city. From north to south, between the buildings, it is 316 feet, and from east to west, 306 feet. In the center is an enclosure, and in that is a fine obelisk. The north side of the square is composed of stately dwellings, and they have all the appearance of a palace. The square is built of freestone, and is beautifully tinted by age. The first thing almost we want to see in these fine towns is the cathedral, if there be one. I never thought that I should be so pleased with old buildings as I find I am. Old houses, castles, and churches have somehow strangely taken my fancy. The cathedral, or as they call it here, the abbey church, is a noble one. It was begun in 1495, and only finished in 1606, and stands on the foundation of an old convent, erected by Osric in 676. It is famous for its clustered columns and wide, elegantly arched windows. The roof is remarkable for having 52 windows, and I believe has been called the Lantern of England. You know that the city takes its name from its baths. The great resort of fashion is at the pump room and the colonnade. This building is 85 feet in length, 46 wide, and 34 high. This elegant room is open to the sick of every part of the world. An excellent band plays every day from one till half past three. The King's Bath is a basin 66 feet by 41, and will contain 346 tons. I have been much pleased with Dr. Granville's works on the spas of England, and there you will find much interesting matter respecting Bath. We made some pleasant excursions in the vicinity of this beautiful city. We have visited Bradford, Trowbridge, and Devizes. Trowbridge is a fine old town, and we looked with interest at the church where the poet Crabbe so long officiated. His reputation here stands high as a good man and a kind neighbor, but he was called a poor preacher. Here, and in all the neighboring places, the manufacture of broadcloths and cashmeres is carried on extensively. Devizes is a charming old town. We were greatly interested with its marketplace and a fine cross erected to hand down the history of a sad event. A woman who had appealed to God in support of a lie was here struck dead upon the spot, and the money which she said she had paid for some wheat was found clinched in her hand. This monument was built by Lord Sidmouth and is a fine freestone edifice with a suitable inscription. Roundaway Down, which hangs over this ancient town, was famous in the civil wars of Charles I. Here, too, are the relics of an old castle. Devizes has two great cattle fairs, in spring and autumn, and the market day, on Thursday, gave us a good idea of the rural population. We have rarely seen finer-looking men than were here to be seen around their wheat, barley, and oats. We have been pleased to see the great English game of cricket, which is so universally played by all young men in this country. It seems to us that the boys here have more athletic games than with us. Prisoner's bass seems a favorite boy's amusement, and nine pins, or as we call it, bowls, 
are played by all classes freely, and it is not regarded as at all unministerial. We are going to London this week, and shall commence sightseeing in earnest. Above all, we are to be at the exhibition. When I have seen the lions, I will write you again. Yours affectionately, James. End of letter 10. Read by Sibella Denton. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, please visit LibriVox.org.